Top of the morning to you. This is Takita. Today we are continuing our saga of Hannibal. This is the Battle of Ebro. Back in 1217 BC. Again, as always, be sure to check out the original link down in the description down below for the original content creator. Go give History Marsh the love and support that they well deserve. And again, as always, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. So Hannibal has control of the Po Valley now. Defeated both Early consoles. in 217 BC, the Roman Senate is still reeling from the defeat at Trebia. But determined to strike back at Hannibal, they look to other theatres to try and shift the balance of war. Hmm. The Roman army that was initially sent to stop the Carthaginian general from reaching Italy is now in Iberia with new objectives under the command of Gnaeus Scipio. Oh, okay. Interesting. It's a continuation collaboration with multiple other history channels. After first arriving in Iberia in early autumn of 218 BC, Gnaeus Cornelius Scipio Calvus defeated and captured Hanno, along with thousands of Carthaginian troops. He also a, sees the rich baggage. That's a really well posi like position for the Romans, because that blocks the Pyrenees and the supply lines for Hannibal. It's so. trained that Hannibal left behind when he marched into the Pyrenees Mountains while on his way to Italy. But despite this victory, Gnaeus lost many of his ship crews during Hasdrubal Barca's raid into the Roman enclave, which crippled his fleet. Luckily for the Romans, Hasdrubal was outnumbered two to one, and he retreated soon after this minor victory, as he could not mount a full-scale offensive. Both generals used the winter months to regroup and plan for the coming year. The Roman general's main objective is to prevent Iberian reinforcements from reaching Hannibal by land. His second objective is to put pressure on Carthaginian holdings in Iberia by any means. From his base at Taraco, Gnaeus spends months consolidating his position. He reaches out to various tribes to establish friendly relations through diplomacy and trade, and looks to broker alliances by offering the tribes protection against the Carthaginians. It doesn't take too long to persuade many locals to join the Roman cause, because just as most Gauls in Italy hate the Romans, so too the tribes of northern Iberia despise the Carthaginians. And although many communities are still apprehensive about confronting Carthage, especially those on the border, tribes further north of the Ebro eagerly ally themselves to Rome. Gnaeus also strengthens... Yeah, well, and I imagine most of those tribes aren't very f friendly or think highly of Carthaginians considering that most of them have been subjugated. Ties with the Greek cities, especially Massilia. Oh, very... yeah. yeah, and Massilia always has an interesting history. Um, it's, it's really the only like enclave of culturally Greek in Gaul. A prosperous city that commits to sending her experienced fleet to help the Romans. And as promised, Gnaeus dispatches garrisons to defend his allies over the coming months. He also garrisons the Ebro River, anticipating an invasion by Hasdrubal Barca in the spring, and arranges the purchase of food and supplies from the locals. In addition, he distributes the plunder taken from Hannibal's baggage train to his army, which boosts his popularity with the troops. Across the Ebro, Hasdrubal Barca posts garrisons along the river to ward off Roman raids and marches back to his winter quarters in New Carthage. Huh. Hasdrubal currently has 15,000 troops at his disposal. But the manpower reserves and the riches of Carthaginian Iberia give Hasdrubal enough muscle to quickly respond to the Roman threat. He spends the winter months resting his army raising funds for new recruits and stockpiling provisions for the upcoming campaign. Ships are repaired 
and additional ships are brought in, along with new ship crews, recruited mainly from the Terdetani tribes in southern Iberia. By spring of 217 BC, Hasdrubal musters a lot. See, they should build up somewhat of their fleet because then they could attack the Roman position from both land and sea. Margin of army to mount an offensive against Nias. Carthaginians march out of New Carthage. Hasdrubal personally leads the ground forces while he puts the fleet of over 40 ships under the command of Himilka. There you go. The fleet sails along the coast, closely keeping pace with the army on land, under whose protection the crews can beach their ships every night to rest. While Hasdrubal initially had 15,000 troops after Hannibal departed from Iberia, it is unknown how many new troops he recruited for the campaign of 217 BC. But considering that Nias received reports from his scouts of the approaching Carthaginians, and yet didn't follow his first instinct to face them in battle, it is safe to assume that the size of Hasdrubal's army was exceedingly strong, which dissuaded the Roman general from giving battle. Hmm. Furthermore, Hasdrubal could potentially tap into his vast manpower pool, while Nias won't be receiving any reinforcements for at least a year. Another reason for the Roman general to remain cautious. Nias decides to march out of Tarraco and take up a defensive position on the Ebro, with his ships following close by. Aware that the Carthaginian fleet can flank him and cut his supply lines, he handpicks his best troops from the legions and loads them into 35 ships, some of which came from Massilia, with their experienced and reputable crews. Yeah, that, that position right on the edge where that hook is in the sea, like that is really kind of the crucial point because that is the point where you can block all of the boats and have the best range. And it's probably on the Carthaginian side, pretty hidden too from the Romans. With his fleet guarding his flank, the Roman general reaches within 15 kilometers of the Ebro. Nias's plan is to concentrate his efforts on the sea. He temporarily stops and sends two Massilian ships to scout ahead. With his army vastly outnumbered, he recognizes that if Hasdrubal successfully surrounds or besieges his positions, the superior Carthaginian fleet could cut off the Roman seaborne supply lines. Yeah. Therefore, his plan is to deal a knockout blow, or at least cripple the Carthaginian fleet. Massilian scouts soon return with reports that the Carthaginians are encamped at the mouth of the Ebro, their ships still beached and unmanned since the night before. Oh, wow. There you Looking go. to seize the fortunate opportunity. That would be intense if you can surprise attack the Carthaginians and disrupt their fleet. Nias gives his ships the signal to attack immediately, hoping to catch the enemy off guard. They make haste towards the Ebro, formed in two lines. The higher quality Massilian wow. ships are in the front, their crews leading the way, while the Roman ships are formed up behind them. However, Carthaginian scouts along the coast spot the enemy fleet and sound the alarm. So they saw Hasdrubal draws up his land forces on the beach and orders Himilco to embark his crews his and put to beach, sea straight uh... away. The Carthaginians, although caught by surprise, have confidence in their ships. Hasdrubal's troops cheer on the crews as they close the distance to meet the Romans. Two Massilian ships are intercepted. Depends how well manned those Carthaginian ships are, though. Himilco's men rush to board the enemy vessels. On the right flank, Carthaginian ships double up on the Romans. As they board the enemy, Himilco's crews begin overwhelming the Massilians and Romans on the right. Meanwhile, chaotic fighting spreads in the center as the Romans latch onto several enemy vessels. Nias's men are firmly on the back foot and losing ground. The Carthaginians huh. outpaced and outmaneuvered his fleet. 
but the battle-hardened Roman troops in the centre hold their ground. Disciplined and organised, they slowly manage to turn the tide by sheer brute force. The legionaries begin pushing the Carthaginians back. In the chaotic fighting, they manage to sink one Carthaginian ship together with its entire crew, then another. Some of Himilco's men begin to waver. Four more ships in the centre are crippled and left adrift with their oars shattered. Jeez. Seeing oh, the gaping man. hole in their line, panic among some of Himilco's crews turns into a hasty, disorganised retreat toward the shore. Uh -oh. Hasdrubal can only watch as the Romans vigorously pursue his fleet. His troops can do little to help the that's, retreating ships. That's a devastating humiliation. Ironically, having his army deployed on the beach offered a clear and safe escape route for the ships, which may have motivated some of the crews to flee rather than fight and risk death. Yeah, that's true. This would certainly explain the sudden collapse of morale among Himilco's men. The Carthaginian fleet finally reaches the shore. Crews beach their ships and hastily disembark, abandoning their vessels in search for safety within Hasdrubal's army. I don't think, like, the Romans aren't there to fight, like, a, a land battle, though. So they're not going to dock. But the Romans aren't done yet. They boldly continue towards the shore, despite the risk of running their ships aground or being attacked by Hasdrubal's troops. To the average observer, it must have seemed like madness to come so close to the shore. But Nias is willing to take the risk. His ships rush in, quickly latching onto Carthaginian vessels that are still oh, wow. seaworthy, and begin towing them away. Jeez. Seeming stunned, the Carthaginians fail to react in time. By the time they realize what has happened, the Romans sail downstream, having wow. captured 25 of their ships. 25 ships, dude. Wow. That's impressive. Jeez. At first, the defeat at the Ebro seemingly changed little. Over the coming months, Hasdrubal, with his army intact, puts pressure on the tribes to rise against Rome. Yeah, but now he, like, that's a severe disadvantage for the Carthaginians now. Because they like, they can't flank them via sea and cut off the Roman supply lines. Stretching Nias to the limit. But the Carthaginian general is also forced to deal with revolts in southern Iberia. Both sides spend over a year quelling revolts and regrouping. For the Romans, after a series of defeats suffered against Hannibal in Italy, news of Nias' success is much welcomed by the Senate. Encouraged, they make plans to send reinforcements to Iberia under the command of Nias' brother, Publius, whose term as consul ended a few months ago. Fully recovered from his wounds, within a year, Publius would arrive with 20 to 30 ships and 8,000 troops, along with food and supplies. However, it is Nias' perseverance at the Ebro that would prove to be the turning point of the war in Iberia. For the next 10 years, the Carthaginian Iberian coast would be undefended. Exposed to Roman raids, Carthage will have to divert a lot of manpower to defend its Iberian towns and countryside. And over the coming years, the Scipio brothers will pose a serious threat to the Carthaginian war effort. That's impressive on the Roman side to, like, that was a bold move to even go into that harbor or that the harbor of that river, the elbow. Man, let me know your thoughts down below and stay tuned for part six here soon. And I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.